I don't know how to introduce this. Come join me. Come on. Okay, good boy. <laughs> so this is definitely a new type of video and I hope I have more like this. I like this setup because I'm cozy. It looks cozy. Sire is cozy. And that's just my vibe. I just love being cozy. I guess to start off, if you don't know me personally, my name is Louise. This is my baby boy, Sire. This is my apartment with Mark, my fiance. We've been together for since 2011, so hitting 13 years this May. I'm Filipino, Filipino-American. I was born in the Philippines and I moved to the United States when I was seven. I'm currently in New Jersey, very close to New York. I'm a Virgo. September 14th is my birthday. Like I said, this is my baby boy, Sire. He's a cardigan corgi. You're so cute. He's turning four at the end of the month, kind of like a cousin of the Pembroke Corgi. He looks way different. He's longer, has bigger ears. He has a bigger head, longer tail, but still short. I have a lot of best friends, but my bestest friends are Camille and Allison. You may see them in the vlogs. We've been friends since elementary school, and then ever since then, we've just been inseparable, even through high school and through college, and even nowadays. So we can get started with the questions. Oh, this is a good first question. What's your favorite color? <laughs> my favorite color is, I think right now it's dark brown, like chocolate brown. If you don't know this, I'm a neutral girly. Neutral colors is just easy to work with. Like black, beige, white, dark brown, sometimes gray. Those are the colors I gravitate towards. Another anonymous question, where did you get Sire? There's a long story with Sire. At the end of 2020, me and Mark wanted to move out. Honestly, one of the biggest reasons is to get a dog because we've been wanting a dog since we still live with our parents it's kind of hard and also our parents were very against having dogs so we told ourselves once we move out we're gonna get a dog honestly that was on the checklist right under sign a lease if we're moving out we're getting a dog type of deal so all these years i wanted a pembroke because all the videos i reposted and all the videos i've seen on social media were the pembroke corkies and they're just so freaking cute their legs are so short, their booties were so big, and they just look so perfect to me. So when we were doing our research, we wanted a dog with a personality similar to ours. We're chill, we can be adventurous, but we're usually homebodies, especially since COVID. So we wanted a dog like that. Mark was actually the one who did research about cardigan corgis and he found that cardigan corgis the breed a lot more chill relax more our type they're still corgi and still short and like all the things i love about corgis and we found a reputable breeder me and mark had to do interviews but mostly mark with the breeder to see if we're the right match and if we actually were legit people. We already had a puppy and he was a black and white cardigan corgi. We are so set, we are getting ready for him to come home. We needed to wait about nine weeks for him to come home to us. And during that time, I was going to Hawaii with my family for a family vacation. We literally moved in and then a day or two after I had to take a flight to Hawaii. And during that time, like we were so excited. Um, Mark sends me pictures because the breeder sends him pictures. And then he, he calls me and he's like, it's urgent, it's about, it's about the cardigan corgi. So the breeder called me and I wanted to get your opinion first. They have this eight month old cardigan corgi puppy who's been a little bit trained, like potty trained and was training for his dog competition show. So this breeder also breeds like show dogs. He breeds them and sells them. We weren't interested in the show dog, so we obviously didn't do our research in that. But she said that there's this show dog that's been training ever since he was born. But because of COVID, his shows got canceled and they were looking for a, ho a new home for him. They said that he's potty trained, he knows some tricks, he's he's growing up really well, he has most of his shot, he gets along really well and they already know his personality and they really, really love Mark. And they're on the phone like at least a couple of times a week and emailing back and forth so they kind of know Mark past the surface level already. 
and they thought that this guy was a good match for him. And we were thinking about it for a while and we were like, as much as I want a puppy puppy, and that's what we've been preparing for, I think that having an eight month old would make our lives a little bit easier, especially since he's trained and all of that. And honestly, best decision ever because we had no idea how to raise a puppy yet. I think at that time of our lives, I don't think we could have handled it well. And Sire grew up to be so perfect. But yeah, that's the story. I think I said everything that I wanted to say there. I didn't even say where we got Sire. We found the breeder on gooddog.com, I think. And the breeder, oh, I forget what it's called. I I'll put it. I I think it's an Alabama, from Alabama. Yeah, so he's a southern doggy. His birth name is Gunner. Now he's Sire. Okay, what else? Two of them pertain to traveling. So how many countries have you been to and which has been your favorite so far? Other questions actually, besides Anguilla, which of your many trips was your favorite? Been to, I believe, 32, oh. Yeah, 32 countries. Anguilla was the last one, so yeah, 32. I actually have a list of them, and I could put it right here because I don't want to bore you. My favorite? Oh, there's so many favorites, honestly. I'm going to base it off of where I would live because if it's my favorite place and favorite trip, I think that means I would live there, and if I had to pick a place, it would be New Zealand, and some honorary mentions would be Japan, Spain, but New Zealand was my favorite. There was just so many things to see. It's such a beautiful place. It's just like otherworldly. And I guess it's because it's on the Southern Hemisphere, but the air there was different. Mountains, everywhere you look. And the city was even really nice. Everyone was really kind over there and really helpful. It was just such a good trip. I went with my sisters. It was really fun. I've been to other trips with them, but. I think that one was my favorite. And I think what sells me, <laughs> this one fact that one of our guides told us is that they don't have spiders there. I don't know how true that is, but I just took it and ran with it. Ever since that trip, I, I don't think I've stopped thinking about it. And that was in end of 2019. Someone asked, what are your personal ins and outs of 2024? So this has been a trend going on around the new year. I know I'm a little late, but I did list out some ins and outs. So I, I just wanted to answer that thoroughly. A couple ins are putting yourself first, prioritizing you and actually acting on it and taking up space. So that really resonates with me this year, especially because I quit my job and I'm finally listening to myself and acting on it and especially with my YouTube being creative and posting a lot now that's been my motto taking up space um, another in is outfit repeating and like building a more simplified closet full of staples I just wore this on Saturday evening and I'm wearing this again so mind your business no but honestly I've always been that person that has to buy a new piece of clothing every time there's an event or I'm going on vacation and I've been to many vacations and I bought so many things so I'm done with that it's I don't care if I posted a picture with them I'm I'm still wearing it and that's actually an out but I'll say that later um, another in is solidifying a real work-life balance so of course it goes hand in hand with me quitting. I didn't really have a work-life balance when I was working at my previous job. I dedicated my full nine to five, probably nine to six, seven, eight <laughs> of my day to it. Like I swear no breaks. And if I did have a break, it would be five minutes. And I'm like, I gotta get back. Like it was, it was not good. But once I clocked out, I clocked out. So I guess that's kind of good, but it's, it was not good for me to be focusing for that long and not giving myself breaks. I want a real work-life balance where I'm focusing for an hour or two and then giving myself a nice break that'll actually help me reset for the next hour or two that I need to work. You gotta have a, a balance too, not just outside of work. Another in kind of goes hand in hand with the outfit repeating is having quality and classic closet pieces, having less items in my closet, but good quality pieces. I haven't been doing a lot of shopping for clothes in a while. And if I do, I really have to think about them. Like I have a to buy list. Those are all the items that I wanna buy. 
that I have to think about. And if I still want it in a month or two, then I'll really start saving up for it. But if I'm like, what the heck was I thinking like a month ago, then I take it off. So I'm investing more in my pieces, also really thinking about what I want and what I really need in my closet. The last in that I thought of was allowing myself to make mistakes and to stray away from perfection. As a Virgo, always have to be a perfectionist and that's probably what caused my burnout at work, in my previous work. I just, everything has to be perfect before I submit it for anyone else to see, especially like with my content. I never post it a lot because I'm like, oh, there's this one thing or like someone's gonna say something about this, but now I'm just like, just post it, just submit it, just go with the flow and you'll, you can make a mistake and learn from it. Or if it's not perfect, it's fine. It's still good, but just put it out. And yeah, those are my ins. And for my outs, um, a lot of it is buying stuff because <laughs> I was an impulsive shopper. So my first out that I thought of was buying the newest skincare or makeup product. I've been doing really good with that for almost the past year now. If there's a new skincare or new makeup product out, I'm like, mm, I need to see reviews first or I have to think about it or do I need it in my routine or will I even use it? And if I say no to at least one of those, then I'm not gonna buy it. And the next one is buying a new outfit for every occasion. So like I said, for every event, it's like a birthday, a party, a vacation, I have to buy something new. That's what I used to do and it was really bad. It's basically a one-time new type of thing or I buy it, wear it once and then it stays in my closet and it just all piles up. When I like do spring cleaning or something, I have so many things and I'm like, damn, I only wore this once. Do I really want like donate or give this away? So after that, I've really been mindful about what I'm buying and what I'm spending my money on. And the next thing is impulse buying and micro trends. So I'm not gonna be participating in those because I'm trying to save up. I just got engaged, so I need as much money to save and for our future, no more impulse buying and participating in micro trends. Another out is being a people pleaser. So I've always been that type to always say yes or never say no to things. Always agreeing to someone even though I kind of am not understanding or agreeing with their views. I'm trying to speak up for myself and advocating for what I actually want. Another out is which goes to the next point, I don't know what I want. So now I wanna be more mindful of what I say and saying what I actually want. So I saw this video, I'll insert it here cause it was really good. It just spoke to me a lot. I don't know what I want is usually code for I am too scared to allow myself to go after what I really want. And another out is fear of judgment. Like I said, I'm just gonna post it. I'm just gonna submit it. I'm just gonna, put out what I have. Whoever wants to judge, judge, and I won't even give them the time of day. And yeah, those are my ins and outs. I really thought about this one, so thank you for that. Another question I had was my Beyonce experience. That's a good one. So in July, honestly, I just had a good summer. Like that was my concert series. I don't really go to concerts and I went to so many last year. So I went to Ed Sheeran, I went to Taylor Swift, Jonas Brothers, I saw Beyonce two times, I saw Kay Tremine, so that's Kay Trinata and Amine, and I just had a really, really good concert year. For Beyonce, I was able to get tickets for both days that she was performing at MetLife. So I went Saturday and Sunday. So Saturday, I bought the tickets with my best friends, Allison and Camille. But Camille couldn't make it, so I brought my sister. I have to include this because that's how I was able to do what I did the Sunday concert day. So I had floor seats both days. So on day one, we were on the floor, but we were a little bit further back, but it was still so good. It was so good. Like I was crying like the whole time. So me and Allison were just sitting in our seats with all our merch. Of course, like we had to stay in our seats, but also they were very strict there. But my sister, Adoris, if you're watching, <laughs> she was literally gone like 80% of the concert. Good thing we had um, aisle seats. So she was able to go in and out, but literally it was just me and Allison basically the whole time. Every time she would be just be gone. And then I'm like, where did you go? And she's like, I was at the front. I was dancing with these guys and these girls and they were all so like happy and they just 
let me dance with them and stand with them. And I'm like, how? Like all the security were like saying, you have to stay in your seat, stay within the lines and stuff like that. So I'm like, how the heck did you do that? She was like, I don't know, I just stayed in the front. And then there's this one song, I think it was Break My Soul, where Beyonce went around the, her circle stage and she was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go. She was standing with us when that song started and she was like, oh my gosh, she's going around. And then she booked it to the front. And I'm like, where are you even going? And she just disappeared. And so we were just having a good time, me and Allie, like, oh my God, like she's actually pretty close. We got good footage. And then my sister came back and she's like, look how close I got. And she was so close actually right there. And I'm like, huh, that's very interesting. And she's like, yeah, try to do that tomorrow when you go. And I'm like, I don't want to break the rules. Like, I'm not like that. And the whole time I'm contemplating after the concert and before the day two concert, I'm like, do I do it? Do I do it? So day two was with Mark. Floor seats way closer, but it's a, it was on one of the sides. It was a better view, but still close, but still far-ish because we were on the floor. So it's really hard to see if you're behind tall people. Break My Soul, I think, was in the middle of the concert. So the whole time I was thinking about, should I do it? Should I do it? Should I not? Should I, am I going to get in trouble? This and that. But then I was like, I gotta do it. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna see Beyonce at her next concert, if this is gonna be my last of hers. I'm just gonna do it. So when Break My Soul started, I knew because she was wearing her pink outfit to Mark. Well, I, I told him, I'm gonna pretend I'm going to the restroom. And then he was like, okay, go, go, go. And then, so I was walking and then that's when like Beyonce would start walking and the bathroom was on, on the other side of the stadium. And that's where, where Beyonce started. Once I was about to reach the bathroom or like on the other side of the stage, like all the security trying to stop people because people were running up. And I was like, just pretending like, oh my gosh, where's the bathroom? And he was like this way, but it's like blocked with people. Like they were running up to try to get a, a video of her. And I'm like, oh no, okay, I'll go this way to get closer to her. And then obviously that part was also barricaded. And then I saw that she was like right in front of me. I had my video up and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I remember she would stop at the very top of the circle. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna stand here for a little bit. And the security were like trying to block out the other people. So they weren't really paying mind to me. So I literally had my phone up. When people record, they have it like up to their face, but I made sure to my right so I could see her and look her in the eye because I love that woman. So I was recording and now she was literally like right there, like literally five feet, five feet. And I looked at her and I was singing along and then she pointed at me and then like smiled and she was like hyping and it was, it was like less than five seconds, but it was still the moment of my life and I loved it. And then after that, I just like couldn't accept it. I'm like, what the heck just happened? And I went back to my seat and I'm like, you would not believe what I just got to Mark. Yeah, so my sister gave me the inspiration on how to get that shot. And I, I wasn't actually that close. I was scheming. Honestly, I wouldn't have known to do that if I didn't go on day one and if it wasn't for my sister. <laughs> Insane, but I could put a, the clip up right now. Next question is, can you do a how to find mid-century modern furniture in our area via Facebook marketplace, like search terms to use and etc. This is a really good question because Facebook marketplace is a place to buy furniture. Like nowadays, that's where I look first before I even search on the web. So in our previous New York apartment, 40% of the items that we have were from Marketplace. Like there were so many good deals all around because people impulse bought during COVID so many gems on Facebook Marketplace during that time. But in terms of finding good pieces and especially mid-century modern, just look up mid-century modern and then what you want, like desk or TV stand or mid-century modern chair, that'll give you pretty good results already because all these people selling their stuff will want to market it that way. Another search term is like, instead of mid-century modern, MCM. A lot of people are lazy nowadays, they're probably posting on their phone, so they're just doing MCM furniture, MCM chair, 
MCM inspired table, MCM inspired TV console. And then this is my biggest tip that I only honestly realized the past couple of months. Search those up as many times as you can within like a week or something. And then save items that you like or would potentially buy the next time you log on to Facebook Marketplace. Literally the items for you type page will have mid-century modern. That's how it worked for me recently. I was looking for a file cabinet. I was searching for like a week on Facebook Marketplace. I couldn't really find anything. I just ended up buying one on Amazon. And then I opened up Facebook Marketplace a week after I purchased it. And there were so many file cabinets that were in good condition that looked cute. And I was like, what the heck? And they were like 10, 20, $30. So it takes time. It's, it's not just like a search and like buy type thing. So you have to build your algorithm. Try to look things up on like a big move in and move out month or period of time. So that's usually in the summer when people are moving in and out of apartments and getting a new lease. So definitely look around those times. I mean, that's just how the game works on Facebook Marketplace. Like you just have to wait for a gem. And I hope that's helpful because that's how we were finding things. So the last questions all pertain to me quitting my job. Talk about your thought process on quitting your previous job. How long it took you to actually do it. Telling your parents transitioning to unemployment. When was the moment you thought this is it, I'm gonna do it. So two years ago was when I really had to stop and ask myself, is this what I really want to do for the rest of my life? But it wasn't really a, I gotta go type thought. It was, this kind of stinks, but I'll stay on and see if this is just a phase. That's when the first thought came into mind. And then as I let months go by and just having that idea in the back of my mind, I was like, wow this is not for me. I was already promoted at this point, so the job got harder, responsibilities piled up. A lot of things just flipped a switch for me, and that was a year and a half ago, and that was when I was really considering moving on to a different company, but doing different things. So still being an accountant, but doing different work. As time went by, I think I got too comfortable and, and I was too nervous to switch gears. I stayed and honestly, that was on me. I really have a lot of fear and anxiety when it comes to job interviewing. So I think that was holding me back a lot. But as time went on and I just stayed, I started hating it more. And last busy season was super rough for me. I was staying up till maybe 11 to one. And there was actually this one day I stayed on until maybe 5 a.m. And that just broke me, I guess. After last busy season, which was 2023 busy season, I was like, okay, yeah, this is gonna be my last busy season here and I wanna move on to something else. That summer, I was casually job searching, but I never really applied because I think at this point, I just really needed a break. And then a lot of things just came up with work and I was busy throughout the whole year, even through summer. And I feel like I never really had a break break. So I think I just really needed a break where I wasn't job searching. I wasn't doing that job. So I think at that point I realized I did want to quit, but just for a little while. And so I started saving up instead of applying for jobs. I've always talked about it with Mark, but there was this one month, I think it was in August or September, where he like sat me down and asked me what I wanted to do. And then we talked about it and he agreed. He was like, yeah, that I think that's a good move for you. And he supported me by mid-September, I think. I was like, I'm doing it. No one can convince me otherwise because I really need this. Honestly, I, I might've known beforehand because I had a trip booked to Asia by maybe June. I had four weeks planned to, to go to Asia, Japan and Philippines. And I was supposed to save up my PTO days, but that didn't happen. I used most of it during the summer. I went to Greece and then I just took some time off here and there, not even going anywhere. I just wanted to take the day off or I just wasn't feeling well, like a mental health day. So I used up all my PTO. So that just solidified that okay, I definitely have to quit because I don't have any time off. Yeah, by September, I was telling my friends, I don't know if they took it seriously. I don't know if they were just like, oh yeah, she's been saying that, blah, blah, blah. But they were still happy for me and they still supported me because they knew that I needed this break. 
And then I told my family. I told my sisters, they were shocked. And they asked me like, why, what happened? Like, did something happen at work? But then I, I would always tell them like, oh my God, work sucks. Like, I do so much and like, there's too many responsibilities. There's just too much work for me. And they understood. But then they were like, oh, did you tell our parents yet? Did you tell mom and dad yet? And I'm like, no, I'll tell them soon. And then when I told my parents, they, they were also asking why. They also asked what I wanted to do. And I said, I don't know. And of course they were probably thinking in their heads like, what the heck? <laughs> but they weren't mad. They weren't scolding me or anything. They were supportive. They were just always asking, what are your next steps? What are you gonna do next? Cause you can't just be unemployed. My last day was going to be the last day of October. Five days after I quit, I had to go. I didn't come back until last week of November, so I was gone for four weeks, just living my best life unemployed. And it was so nice coming back to nothing and not having to log on and catch up on work. It was awesome. Where did you find the courage to quit your job? Was it scary at first? A lot of realizations. I think what helped a lot was talking it through with Mark, because obviously he's my partner. Like he needs to know if he's going to maybe help me. If I need some help along the way, telling my parents and my family, seeing their reaction definitely solidified that for me and gave me the courage. But it was ultimately up to me. I was really fed up with what I was doing and couldn't anymore. I was super burnt out. I didn't love what I was doing. I worked from home, so. I would wake up and dread the day. That's how bad it got. So I don't know if it was courage or if it was being fed up. <laughs> it was definitely scary, but at the same time, I prepared myself for this. I saved up, like told my friends, told my family, everyone around me that needed to know that I care about, I'd care about me, knew. And no one was really against it. That helped me a lot. I'm taking this time to recover, but also do what I've been meaning to do. I don't know if anything is making sense. Really just listen to myself. <laughs> that was it. Um, what else, what else? Do you ever see yourself going back to that field? What I was telling everyone, if I would ever go back to a, an accounting job, I would want to do it at a fun company. I mean, not to say my previous company wasn't fun. It's auditing. Is it fun? <laughs> I would rather be an accountant for fashion brand that I'm interested in or makeup, skincare, like something that I can relate to. I want to be in an environment where I can relate to the people and relate to the products, to the services. If I were ever to join corporate America again, it would be that. So if any fashion makeup skincare brand is watching, hire me please. And then another question, did you really want to become an accountant? Yeah, in high school, I love, 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 love numbers. Math was like my favorite subject. It just made sense to me. Everything made sense. Just numbers and what better number than dollars? <laughs> Another choice was an actuary, but I looked at all the requirements and you have to take 10 exams or something. And I'm like, no, thank you. I mean, I did well at my job. I got early promoted at my job. I was getting raises and bonuses often. So I was, I was good at my job, but it didn't resonate with me. Yes, I can talk about what I'm doing now, creating content for myself and also helping Mark with his business, his brand. In Anguilla, the purpose of that trip was to help him create content for the property. Obviously that didn't work out as I intended it because he had a master plan of proposing to me. I talked to him about this, about what my role actually is, I guess could call me as a creative director, bounce off of each other's ideas, give him criticism, help him to work on projects that he's been wanting to do, like the magazine Sunkiss. If he ever needs my help, I'm just always here to guide him, direct him. I was doing that before, but I, I couldn't really focus and give him my 100% because I was working on my job. He would ask like, hey, can you help me out with this? Or can you see if this looks good? That's what I'm doing now. And then mostly creating content for myself. Doing this, like I wouldn't be able to do this if I was doing anything else. <laughs> People are always saying it's the best time to do it. I don't have any kids. You know, Sarah's my little love bug. No mortgage, nothing to tie me down so I, I think this is the best time to do it. Yeah, I'm, I've just been listening to myself. I guess that's the whole premise of this. Just listening to myself 
advocating for myself and acting on it. Yeah, I quit. I'm doing what I like. Just trying to see where I fit right now. And I've talked to so many people about this and they always say like, I wish I could have done that. And I'm just happy I did it. Not me getting emotional. <laughs> I'm happy where I am right now. And I'm so grateful I could do this. Not me crying. Okay, I've calmed down. I just wanna say thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Just thank you. <laughs> do you have tissue? I don't think there's tissue in there. Rolling camera A. I love being horizontal, so <laughs> this is like next level above not being horizontal. But obviously we weren't interested in, in the dog show. I mean, a dog, what? A show dog. Sorry, <laughs> why are you giving the side eye like that? <laughs>